Thank you. When I was in middle school, I was forced to read a book by a famous author about an old man who fished a giant marlin. The story was excruciatingly boring. <laughs> and every day for weeks, we discussed the symbolism and the themes and the secret meanings behind the pages of a book that put me to sleep every time I tried to read it. <laughs> That's right. I hated Ernest Hemingway's Nobel Prize winning book, The Old Man and the Sea. But the problem wasn't Hemingway, obviously. The problem was 12-year-old me. Clearly, we were not a good match. I didn't fish. I knew nothing about fishing. And what I wanted was to see some action. I wanted to see a story with a kid like me. I wanted to see myself in the pages of that book. As a young person, it's not easy to find a book that you'll love, a book that you'll recommend to all your friends. But how, it sounds crazy, but Thousands of books are published every year. And middle grade and young adult novels have experienced a great resurgence in the last couple of decades. How does a young person, say a 12th grader, find that book, the one that will inspire them and change their life forever? When we talk about motivating young people to read, it shouldn't be about what we think they have to read. It should be about what they want to read. If young people can read for pleasure and entertainment, they can become lifelong readers. But what does this mean, and why does it matter? So academically speaking, reading, writing, and basic math are the fundamental tools necessary to function in society. Reading helps us acquire knowledge and develop our critical thinking skills not to mention our vocabularies and our overall writing skills. But reading can do more than that. Reading helps us understand and become empathetic. We're not robots. We are complex creatures that need ideas and need to learn to express ourselves. And understanding this, knowing that we are individuals in this place and time, are important for us to understand the empathy and the help that we need. Unfortunately, reading scores uh, have fallen. According to the National Assessment for Educational Progress, more than a third of students cannot read even at the most basic levels in fourth and eighth grade. This is scoring the lowest levels on the test. But learning to express ourselves, knowing that we're being heard, that our feelings are validated, are important to childhood development and building self-confidence. And reading can do that. Reading helps us connect. The stories in young adult books reflect this. They're like a mirror that looks past our physical appearance and shows us who we are as individuals in this place and time. Even fantasy novels like the Harry Potter series about a boy wizard caught in the struggle between good and evil is also a story about Harry and his friends fighting to belong. This theme plays out over and over in middle grade books and young adult books, but especially, and it is especially relevant in diverse books. Diversity in books like I'm Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter and Aristotle and Dante discovered the secrets of the universe, 
books such as those that deal with important issues such as immigration and assimilation, that um, deal with mental health issues and sexuality, and many other books like them, at their core have a similar theme. They reinforce the idea that we all belong. But diversity in young people's literature is something that is relatively new. Books that feature the lives of non-white and LGBTQ plus individuals have been mostly absent from bookstores and libraries until recently. And yet despite this positive trend in books with diversity, now these books are being removed from schools and libraries, making it difficult, if not impossible, for young people to access stories where they can see themselves on the page. Instead of giving them a positive idea, instead of helping them access books that can help build self-confidence and helping them become open-minded members of society, we are erasing them from our culture and our history. As I struggled to become a writer, I had a problem. I grew up without a sense of home. I didn't know where I belonged or who I was. So I didn't know what to write about. My mother's from Haiti, my father's from New Zealand. I was born in the Dominican Republic. I grew up in Mexico City. I moved to Miami when I was 15. I did not have an easy answer to what is otherwise a simple question. Despite years reading books, I did not know that I could write about the places I came from. I had yet to read a book that addressed the fractured realities I had grown up with. Until one day, I read The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Now the book centers around a Mexican-American girl growing up in a working class neighborhood of Chicago. And while the book addresses important issues for young women and Latinos, I found something different. I discovered a sense of freedom to write about my conflicting cultures and about my own search for self. Now, not everybody who reads will want to become a writer. But the importance of seeing oneself on the page, especially as a young person struggling with issues of identity and belonging, can be life-changing. It validates who we are, especially if we're different from those around us. We like to say that this country is a melting pot. But that's not really true. We choose to separate ourselves from others who are not like us. We choose certain neighborhoods to live among people that are like us. We prefer certain news channels because they deliver the, new, the view of the world in a way that we accept or that we agree with. More and more, we segregate ourselves from people who are not like us because of the choices we have. And the internet and social media are not helping. Sometimes even a family living in the same household can feel like you're living in different worlds. But what's important is to know who we are. Unfortunately, people fear those who are not like them because we don't understand them. We fabricate prejudice out of ignorance. But diverse books are the antidote to bigotry. That is a superpower of literature. Books introduce us to worlds we know nothing about. They take us on journeys to faraway places, imagined places, 
They introduce us to individuals, characters that are different and exotic than the way we are. And in the end, we come to understand the lives of other people who are not like us. We see the problems and the difficulties they've been through. And we walk a mile in their shoes. And we come to realize that we all want the same thing, to be happy, to love and be loved, to belong. And this is how we begin to forge bridges between people and cultures. This is how we set ourselves on a path to a more harmonious society. This is why we should have shelves and shelves of books available for young people. Diverse books, fiction, poetry, nonfiction, Books should not just be in libraries, they should be everywhere. We should have conferences and reading fairs and events with readers and authors so that young people can come and find books that they will enjoy. We should even have places where young people can just hang out and play hoops, play video games, but the world also happens to be books. To build a community of readers, we need to create an environment that nurtures the written word. It takes just one book for a person to connect with and become a reader, the way different books have affected me in my life. Now, maybe it was okay for me not to understand the old man in the sea, except for this one thing. That book turned me off to reading. At 12 years old, I came to the conclusion that reading was boring. It wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I picked up a copy of Hemingway's For Whom the Bells Told, the stories about an American fighting in the Spanish Civil War who gives his life for his ideals. That book changed my life. I went straight to the library and read everything Hemingway had written and decided that one day I was going to be a writer. I even reread The Old Man in the Sea. I still don't fish, <laughs> but I love that book. Thank you.